I'm working on my first commercial game, Rogue Resonance, a 3D top-down action roguelike, taking inspiration from these games. Let me show you the progress over the last month I made and how at one point I almost gave up on this game. Before I deep dive into the project itself, a quick intro about me for setting the context. I'm a software engineer by profession and I have been working on smaller games as a hobby for the past few years now. Recently, I got laid off by the company I was working in thanks ChatGPT. So I thought why not give indie game dev dream a chance. So I have very limited time and I am developing this game by myself. I mean, what could go wrong? So I started planning and scoping out the gameplay loop. I really like to use pen and paper for writing down my thoughts for clarity rather than typing it out in a JDD or some software. It gives me a lot more freedom to scribble anywhere and connect the dots as I go about it. As you can see, this was the initial gameplay loop that I had noted down, which still holds mostly true today. Here are the core gameplay pillars that I really want to nail with this game. For the main combat loop, I decided to go with the melee based approach because I really love the risk versus reward aspect of it in games like Death Door and Hollow Knight. And I am a sucker for the intense boss fights, which I do plan to have quite a few. More on this a bit later on. There will be a variety of range attacks as well, which players can modify and upgrade with the skill system. But there will be a fixed limit as to how many range attacks can be done, which will be refilled on attacking enemies. For the skill system, I am planning on having something similar to Hades. After clearing a certain type of room, the player will be able to choose a power-up. This system is what hopefully would distinguish each run. As for the story, I won't spoil much, but I am planning on having some wacky story and characters taking inspiration from my favorite game Undertale. There are few other things that I know I should be worried about, but I am not at the moment. That's a future me's problem. Enough of the game design talk for today. Now let me show you the actual progress so far. First, let me get this out. I am using some pre-made assets, particularly for the characters and some of the VFX, which I really needed to if I ever wanted to finish this game in my lifetime, especially with the ambitious scope and deadlines I have set for myself. Anyway, for the level generation, I looked into other roguelike games as to how they do the level generation. I liked the simplicity of Binding of Isaac's level generation. So I started coding something similar. Here's a rough overview of the implementation. I have these rooms with various possible layouts. Some have only single door. Let's refer to these as closing rooms and others have multiple doors or paths the player can go from. I'm calling this open rooms. Initially, I start by placing the starting room from where the player will spawn. I place all the possible open directions from this room into the queue. Then I cycle through the queue and pick the direction which is on top of the queue. Then I check all the possible rooms which have doors pointing in valid directions from this coordinate point and randomly select one room layout type. Then I add all the possible directions from that room. This process continues until I have the required number of rooms placed. Then I cycle through all these rooms from the starting room through an algorithm called BFS and close out all unnecessary doors. Also, during this process, I mark the distance from the starting room as a difficulty factor which will be later used to spawn enemies and rewards accordingly. There is a lot more than this that I am doing, like placing various room types and having multiple areas. All of this while ensuring it's easy to modify as possible by tweaking some values. Like if I want to generate 30 rooms in one area and different in another or have 3 boss rooms, I just need to change some variables. This way hopefully I won't have to touch the level generation script again, thank god. So I created the art for the minimap and this is how it looks right now. Also the minimap will be dynamically updated as the player goes through different rooms and in each room adjacent rooms will be visible. Special rooms will have a question mark over them until you visit them other than the boss room of course which I want to show to warn the player. 
I really like when the game surprises you with some special rooms like in Hades there are these quest rooms or fountain rooms to give the player some breathing room so that is something I really want to capture in my game then I moved on to creating the actual levels I opened up blender and made some rocks nah not this better rocks yeah grass and bushes and other level stuff then i went ahead and made a few levels using those assets i am using unity's built in terrain system for the rooms and painting over the terrain using the terrain paint brush and i must say it really feels so relaxing to paint a level like this then i implemented the level transition and scene management logic for this i am using a similar approach to this video now let's move on to what i believe is the most important part of any game character controller i coded basic movement dash and both types of attacks by the way i am using a simple state machine architecture for the player script which really makes it easy to debug and adds basically what's called a separation of concerns to the various states of the code player character will have combo attacks with each strike doing more damage or the status effects will be applied on enemies depending on the active skill card there is also dash which is pretty basic right now it will have different status effects like having a freeze effect over an area where dash started hmm definitely not copying from some small indie game hmm and i also have this projectile kind of attack which will be modifiable with the skill pickups as you clear the rooms i will probably be talking more on this in the next devlog because that is what i am working on right now speaking of which either you can subscribe right now and never miss out any future devlogs and be part of this development journey or you can just miss out i guess your choice anyway i spent a lot of time getting the melee attack trigger to feel just right on connecting two enemies but what ultimately worked was adding a few seconds time freeze on connecting the player's attack onto the enemy definitely didn't steal it from some other game also i added the control support i had to move to the new input system but eventually i got it done it feels so nice to move around with a controller and just delete the enemy from existence also while i was at it i added the key remapping feature by referring to this video check out this amazing channel if you haven't already for the enemy ai i am using a combination of nav mesh agents and rigid body physics essentially when i want to move the enemy i am setting the rigid body to be kinematic and using a nav mesh agent to navigate around the level and when i want to apply a force on the enemy for example when applying knock back or when jumping towards the player i am disabling is kinematic and applying the force then resetting when the force becomes almost zero surely it worked perfectly on the first try without any issues i am using behavior trees to control the behavior of the enemies which essentially gives me a lot more control over the enemy ai as it makes the code a lot more modular and easier to debug this is probably overkill for normal enemies but since i really want to get the boss fights right i think behavior trees are perfect for that speaking of which i am working on a mini boss fight but more on that in future devlogs just a sneak peek i guess here is the point where i almost gave up on this game i was experiencing a lot of unity crashes while in play mode for a long time i wasn't sure what was causing this crash and coupled with the fact that there were tons of bugs and enemies were just moving randomly I was losing motivation really fast. It was time to solve these bugs fast or go back to 9 to 10 job. As I mentioned earlier, I am using that weird mix of adding physics knockback and nav mesh agent which was causing a lot of issues. Also, for the player character, I am using Unity's built-in character controller which essentially doesn't interact with the physics at all, which made all these issues a lot worse. So, I had weird clipping issues i know some games make it so that player takes damage when they get in contact with enemies but i really didn't want to go that route 
I struggled to come up with a quick fix but eventually I decided on making enemies not have collisions with the player layer this solved the issue since when the enemies does the attack I have a separate box collider for doing damage to the player as for the crashes I eventually found out that one of the particle system was causing this issue which on reworking a bit solved the issue I have no idea what was the actual issue but at least that seems to fix the issue for now there were tons of other bugs but i won't bore you with all that i know there are still tons of things to do and i am still in the prototyping phase i am yet to build a lot of the key systems for this game but that's all for now it's a future me's problem please like share and subscribe to the channel also I really would like to hear your thoughts about the game visuals or whatever you want to say in the comments below I really appreciate it thanks for watching